Oh, okay. Okay, here we go. Thank you, everyone. I am back. Hello, Rochelle. Thank you for joining us. Happy to see Hi. you. How's it going today? Good. Long to see. <laughs> Are you recovered from the uh, outdoor class? Uh, sort of. I'm showered at least. So. Okay, there you go. That's progress. <laughs> Nice. Well, welcome everyone to our meal prepping tips and tricks workshop. Thank you for tuning in uh, with us this morning. Um, really happy to have you here. For those of you that don't know me um, or will be joining this later on watching the recording, my name is Jillian. I'm a coach here at Cali for Fitness. We're a local a uh, gym that focuses on boot camps and group training. And then we also provide extra support with fitness evaluations, nutrition consultations. We do health and wellness workshops with a physical therapist we have in-house. And then also these now online nutrition workshops, just to give you guys some extra support and accountability outside of boot camp classes so that you can just maximize your efforts at the gym and reach your goals. So before we get started, how many of you meal prep? Raise your hands, anyone? Yeah, awesome. So when do you meal prep? Is it on the weekends, in the evenings? Sundays. Sundays? Yeah. On the weekend. Right. Yeah, on the weekend, awesome. And how often do you meal prep? Is it every week? Uh, every other week? For me, I do it. I've been doing it every every Sunday, but it's only been two weeks, so mm -hmm. I don't have a long track record. Okay. Or that I would try and do it every week, but some weeks, if I was out of town, it just wouldn't happen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we talked about that at your fitness evaluation, and just kind of spitballing some different ways that we could do that if we're out of town or we don't have our normal day available to prep. Maybe the week before, if we know we've got the make extra so that you have that available for either one to two or even three weeks if you've got that plan in mind. Awesome. So what would you say is your biggest struggle when it comes to eating healthy? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sticking to it. Sticking to it. Yeah. yeah. The accountability, you're like, get into a workout routine, you're like, all right, I'm going to eat salad. Come on, right? <laughs> so when I tried to meal prep, uh, my biggest struggle was coming up with different ideas because I realized I was doing the same thing over and over and I was getting kind of sick of eating the same thing for the week. I like chicken, broccoli, and you know, potato. And that was the same meal all week long and then that was the biggest struggle, like find different ways so we can be more creative. Yeah. I'm sick of eating eggs. Yeah. And that's a common thing that, you know, we want to meal prep, but number one is finding the time or not having to spend all day long in the kitchen because like today, for example, it's a beautiful day here in San Diego. We'd rather be out enjoying the nice weather at the beach um, or then we don't know what to eat because we just default to the same chicken, broccoli and, you know, sweet potato and Tato's case. And we just have the same thing over and over because we don't want to deviate and mess up our, our goals. Uh, so those are all really awesome things and um, a lot of struggles that, you know, most people have. So today we're going to be talking about some different tricks and meal prepping hacks you can do to maximize your time in the kitchen and uh, with minimal effort and just get the most out of it so you can go on with your day in your life and in the, enjoy your weekends and then also be able to switch it up so that you're not eating the same thing over and over. Because the idea is that we want to establish healthy lifestyle changes and habits so that we're not you know, constantly switching stuff up. So let me share my screen with you guys here and I will show you our meal prepping tips and tricks, meal prepping tips and tricks workshop today. So we're setting ourselves up for healthy eating habits. But first, how many of you can relate to this picture? The kitchen is a mess, there are dirty dishes everywhere. Yeah, Rochelle's shaking her like, uh-huh. This poor woman is frazzled. I'm sure, Robert, you feel like this all the time, right? With your hands on your head, like, oh my goodness. Uh, she's probably got kids screaming in the background. And the last thing she probably feels like doing is meal prepping. One, because she doesn't have any space 
and two, she has to do all of this work before she can even begin. So tip number one is going to be starting with a clean kitchen. Now this may sound pretty straightforward and standard, but you'd be surprised how just setting yourself up for success by having the dishes done, emptying the dishwasher so as you're meal prepping and making those dirty dishes, you can put it away right away. Uh, having the garbage emptied, so again, as you're throwing your scraps and your things that you don't need, you're, you don't have an overflowing garbage. Um, and then also just having your countertops clean and free of clutter so you actually have space to work. This is going to allow you to work more efficiently. And Rachel Ray, you know, the famous uh, chef as well that's on TV, she recommends having a garbage bowl on your counter where you can actually just use that with all of your food scraps and your garbage, your eggshells and things, so you don't have to keep walking back and forth to the garbage can. So just little hacks like that can go a long way in just maximizing your time and making your time in the kitchen more efficient. The second thing we wanna do is make a list. So have a plan when it comes to what you're gonna be eating for the week. You know, we've all heard the expression, if you fail to plan, you plan to fail. So rather than always constantly defaulting to that same boring chicken and broccoli, we can make a list and get some ideas together and plan out what we're gonna grocery shop for. So only buying the things that are on your list. Now you can use the notes section in your phone or there's an app called To Do that you can download for the iPhone. Uh, Androids, I'm not sure if that's available there, but you can take a look. And it's nice because you can write down all of your ingredients and it's got like a little circle next to it. So when you've purchased your item or you've placed it in your cart, you just click that little circle and it does a little check mark for you. So it's a nice, easy way to keep yourself organized while you're grocery shopping. Also speaking of grocery shopping, when we're at the supermarket, we wanna to stick to the outer edges of the store. That's where all the healthy food lives, your fresh produce, your milk, your, your uh, whole grains and things like that. The inside of the grocery store, we really should only be visiting when you're getting your non-perishables. Things like your nuts, uh, your brown rice, your spices, uh, any condiments that you're planning on using and, and staying away from the candy aisle, the chip aisle, because I don't know if you're like me, if if I see it, I'm going to eat it and I'm going to put it in my bag and just, oh, just one little snack, what could it hurt? But then having those temptations at home is misaligned with your nutrition goals. Um, when you're buying condiments, we touched upon this in our last online workshop a couple weeks ago, the Trim and Treat Yourself workshop, with tips and tricks for cutting down on your sugar intake, we talked about just being mindful of the sugar content in your condiments and also the sodium. So you can go back and uh, take a look on our Facebook page for that and get all of those little tricks there. So yeah, so just sticking to the outer edges of the store. So now that we've got a clean kitchen, we have space to work, we've got our shopping list, we've gone grocery shopping, we have everything we need, now it's time to plan out our meals. So we want to get colorful with our food. So when it comes to eating colorful food, it's best when your produce is in season or at its brightest and ripest because that's when it has the highest concentration of nutrients. So right now we're in the fall season, we're seeing a lot of pumpkin, a lot of squash, a lot of um, pears and apples. So we wanna take advantage of each produce that's available each season so that we can, again, have that variety of flavors and uh, get the ones that are best in season. Uh, you can also shop at the farmer's markets for a lot of your fresh produce and a lot of that way is it's typically cheaper than if you're purchasing it at the grocery store um, in your waistline. And then before you put all of that beautiful fresh produce away, uh, you, what you can do if you've already got an idea in mind of what you're planning on making, if you're grocery shopping on a day other than when you're meal prepping, is you can start by being your own sous chef and slice and dice those vegetables and the fruit in advance and then put them in containers and keep them in the fridge or on the counter so that when it's time to meal prep or when it's time to do your cooking, you've already got the majority of the work done and you only have to spend time on the cooking process, not on the prep plus the cooking. So uh, with the tasting of the rainbow, every time I think of that, I think of Skittles, <laughs> but this is the good the kind of Skittles. Uh, our bodies utilize and use everything that we eat or drink in one way or another. So it's important that we mix it up to 
and we give a, our food a chance to interact with each other. For example, your iron and your vitamins work really well together and by eating um, foods that are high in vitamin C, such as your yellow and orange foods, um, feeding that with iron rich foods, such as your broccoli or things like that, it can aid in the absorption of both of those nutrients. So it's a nice way to have different color food groups on your plate. So we always wanna divide our plate up into your lean protein, your fresh vegetables, and then you can have a serving of your grains or your complex carbs. Um, if you're looking for great foods, speaking of colorful foods, you want to focus on blue and purple foods. So blueberries are really good for enhancing your memory, your cognition, and they also lower blood pressure. So a lot of uh, our fruits and vegetables can work synergistically within our body together, but then they can also support other aspects and areas of our life, such as our cognition. Uh, also, if you take a look at the PowerPoint here, when you're cooking and preparing your food, you want to separate your food so that those slower cooking foods are all cooked together and your faster cooking foods are cooked together. This will minimize the, the chance that some of your slower cooking vegetables, such as or your faster ones, such as your asparagus and your cherry tomatoes, don't burn while the slower cooking ones, like your carrots and your cauliflower, are undercooked. So just having things separated is going to help you keep it, uh, tabs on your food and have it be prepared the freshest way possible. And then, of course, we always want to make sure that we're focusing on portion size. So those of you, you guys are all part of our fitness family here. So you've done a fitness evaluation with me. And in your folders, you've got that portion control guideline using just your hand. Uh, you know, so just being mindful of each of the portions of food that you're putting on your plate. All right, so that's our fresh produce. Now let's move on to our grains. So grains are a really awesome, versatile food that can work for both sweet and savory, but they can take forever to cook, right? How many of you have ever sat there waiting for like actual non-instant oats to cook? Takes a while, right? Um, so what you can do is cook them in batches and then cool them in the fridge and divide them into meal size portions that you can freeze or later to have. Um, the nice thing, uh, like cooked brown rice, for example, it'll last up to five days in the refrigerator and then obviously longer if you're freezing it. And the nice thing about rice is, and a little bonus here for you, when it's cooked and then cooled and then reheated, uh, some of the starch is converted to resistant starch. So what resistant starch does is there's starch molecules that actually resist digestion, meaning it functions similar to fiber, which fills us up longer, helps us stay regular. So that's a nice little added bonus there. And then this resistant starch also acts as a prebiotic, so it feeds the healthy bacteria in your gut. It's actually beneficial for you to have those grains cooked in advance and then cooled in the fridge and then reheated later on. Um, you can also use this with your overnight oats. We'll get into that a little bit later when we, um, when we get to a few more slides, but really great way that you can have filling healthy complex carbs uh, in your diet so that it keeps you know, for a long period of time. Tip number five. How many of you guys own muffin tins at home? Yeah, but you know, it's used for a lot more than just making standard muffins. So you can use muffins not only to prepare batches and larger portions or portion sized, but larger uh, uh, meals in just your muffin tin. So when we make our smoothies, smoothies are a great way, especially for breakfast, if you're on the go or you're not accustomed to eating food, you can uh, mix and match your fruits, your veggies, you can throw in some protein powder to up the protein content of your smoothies. You can also add in chia seeds or flax seeds to give it a little bit of an extra nutritional boost in the healthy fats there. But oftentimes when we're making smoothies, I know in my case, you know, you have a little bit of this, a little bit of that, and you're like, man, maybe just another little, a little pour of the milk or another little handful of frozen or fresh fruit. And before you know it, you have way more than one serving size. And you fill up the glass, but then you don't want to be wasteful. So you end up drinking an extra half a glass or, or glass of that uh, smoothie and then you know, your calories start to pile up and pile up and it's way more than you intended. So the nice thing that you can do, and I'm sure if you have family, uh, kids or 
some kids are roommates at home and you're up early in the morning, they would appreciate that you make these smoothies in advance rather than running the blender at the crack of dawn. You can pour it into your muffin tins and then when you're ready to have it in the morning as you're getting ready for work or to come to the boot camp, to the gym here, you can just start to let it thaw a little bit and just pop out the little individual cups. And then that way you have specific portion controlled servings of your smoothies. Once all of them are thawed, you can just pop the other ones into a, a Ziploc freezer bag, one or two, and then you have that for the rest of the week. And that way you're not over indulging in the uh, calories from your breakfast smoothie. Another great way is to use them to boil hard boiled eggs. Hard boiled eggs are a way to get a protein filled snack in during your day when you're busy running around at the office or driving the kids to and from school and things like that. So you can, rather than having, you know, boiling water spilling all over your cooktop, burning everything, making a mess, having to clean up the pan, this is a great way. You can boil 12 hard boiled eggs at once in the oven, just set it to 350 degrees and bake for 30 minutes and voila. The last thing, and most of you have this in uh, your fitness evaluation folders as well, uh, the recipe here is you can make your own individualized egg muffins. And this is a great way that you can, if you have kids at home, can get the family involved. Everyone can make their own little egg muffins. You can put in whatever veggies or meat or cheeses that you like. Uh, pour in the liquid eggs or egg whites and then bake it in the oven and you now have 12 servings of egg muffins. If you want to use it for breakfast, you can have one or two in the morning. Uh, to beef it up, you can add a slice of whole grain toast with some avocado. You can also use these as a healthy snack on the go. One will be great, just pop it in the microwave for, you know, 15, 30 seconds, and then you've got a nice, hot, healthy, satisfying snack, you know, to get you through the day. Any questions so far? No? Yeah, Michelle. When you're doing the eggs and the muffin tins, do you use cupcake liners or you just spray the tin? Yeah, great question. Um, I just spray with a little bit of Pam, um, or you could use a little bit of coconut oil, and then you just bake it that way. Yeah, and then it just pops out pretty easily if you've got some oil in the in the bottom there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no problem. All right, moving on from our multifunctional muffin tins, we have tip number six, which is the must-have mason jar. Like that alliteration I threw in there? <laughs> so mason jars are awesome because they're easy to clean, they're microwave safe, super sturdy. You can use it not only for storing your ingredients, but also for packing healthy meals on the go, such as your salads. So this is a recipe for a strawberry feta salad that's on your slide right there. Uh, when you're preparing your mason jar salads, what you want to do is start with the dressing on the bottom and then layer your, uh, your foods up from there. After the dressing, you want to use either your lean protein, such as uh, chicken, or you could do, in this case, strawberries or tomatoes, something that's going to block the dressing from the lettuce so that it doesn't get all soggy and wilted. Um, and then you can just pile on any of your extra ingredients that you want there. Leave a little bit of room at the top so that you can shake it and mix it all together with the dressing when you're ready to enjoy it. And then just place a paper towel, if you're planning on storing it in the fridge and not eating it right away, just place a paper towel on top of the lettuce and um, screw the top shut. And then that'll help prevent some extra moisture from getting in there and keep your salad nice and fresh. You can also use mason jars for making overnight oats, which is a really quick and easy thing. Just a, a scoop of your quick dry oats. You can add in either uh, milk or yogurt, whatever fresh fruit or spices that you like. Um, and that can be a great way to cut down on the sugar just by using cinnamon or nutmeg. And then um, let it soak overnight and you've got a nice, healthy, fulfilling breakfast for you for the next day. Uh, another great thing about your mason jars is it can also be a lot easier for those eggs that we prepared earlier in our muffin tin. Rather than sitting there and trying to peel it, sometimes I know I go and you get the little tiny pieces that are like this big and it takes you like forever to peel the egg. Just throw the eggs in there, shake it up, and then it'll peel the egg itself. Same thing with your garlic. Just stick your garlic hose in, shake it up, and you've got nice, easily peeled garlic without all the hassle of trying to get those little. Uh, whatever it is on top of it off. Um, and then you can use it for making quick and easy side dishes. 
So for example, just put a little bit of water uh, with some fresh broccoli and then maybe even some pesto sauce or some seasoning in there. Microwave until it's tender and you've got a nice hot, uh, healthy and delicious little side dish or even snack during the day. So you can always pre-prep your, uh, your snacks while you're at work or on the go, which is a nice, uh, nice little feature there. So now that we've got all of our food purchased, we've sliced and diced, and we want to sort everything out, we want to talk about uh, how we're going to store that. So we want to invest in quality meal storage containers. So it's best to buy the same brand of containers because that's gonna help you save time finding the matching lid, right? I don't know about you guys, but my Tupperware drawer was just getting out of control between saving the takeout Tupperware and having you know, all this plastic stuff. Um, and with the plastic, it's really not the best if you wanna microwave it because all of the plastic gets into your food and it's really not healthy. So by having glass, um, one of the things is it's great because it's really durable, it's microwavable safe, dishwasher safe, super easy to clean, they last forever. And when you have all of your nice, healthy, fresh cut produce in there, it's very visually stimulating. So um, when you place that in the front and center of your fridge, it's actually more appetizing and you're more likely to want to eat that healthy food rather than some of the... Uh, maybe the not so healthy food that you've got in there. So a little tip, if you've got family or roommates or you know that don't have the same nutrition goals that you're working on, hide that stuff in the back of the fridge and keep all of the nice, fresh, healthy food in the front so that it's more eye-catching and appealing to you. You can also mix and match the different sizes. So you can prep, you know, if you wanna make your own homemade salad dressing or have nuts or that garlic clove that you prepped earlier, you can put them in smaller containers and leave the larger containers open for your prepped salads, your protein, and then your full meals. You can also use uh, Ziploc bags for your dry snacks. So prep and, you know, just buy baby carrots or slice up some cucumber, um, have a handful of nuts. And just keeping that all sectioned and organized, like you see in the picture, can be a really great way to have your whole day planned out for you and then your whole week. Um, so that's a, a really nice tip right there. And tip number eight is to be mindful of your time. So it can take all day long if we let it. So by setting a time, or maybe giving yourself two hours in the morning or some time, you know, you're planning to work more efficiently and being more productive during that window of time because you know you've only got a certain amount of time to get this stuff done. Um, and that way also we can help it from seeming so overwhelming. We also wanna be able to multitask while we're in the kitchen. So rather than focusing on just one thing at a time, what you can do is try to use the whole kitchen at once. So we talked about those slower roasting vegetables at the beginning of the presentation have those cooking in the oven while you've got something else cooking on the stovetop. You know, get your crock pot ready and you can mix some things up together in the crock pot. And then um, you can have another station of slicing and dicing all of that fresh produce. You can even, um, you know, get your ingredients mixed together. So utilizing the whole kitchen at once is going to be a really great way that allows you to get more done in a shorter amount of time. And last but not least, we don't want to go at alone. So get the family involved, get your roommates involved, make it a friend thing. It's going to be a lot more enjoyable when you have um, other people working with you. You can socialize, listen to music, and everyone can have a certain task. You can assign someone to do the meal prep, uh, the meat prep, and someone else is measuring ingredients. Um, getting the kids involved is a great way that they're more likely to eat that food because they've had a hand in preparing it. And also to step away from the same old boring chicken and broccoli every day, you can add just different spices to your chicken and section it off like in this picture here with uh, tinfoil meal dividers. And then that's a great way to have multiple flavors of protein cooking all at the same time. You can also create theme weeks. So have a fiesta week and do different um, Mexican dishes that you make at home that are a healthier version or around the world where you can have a different meal from the country. You can do Greek night, Italian night, your own healthier version of you know, Chinese food, or crock pot week. 
today is not a good example, but as we get into cooler temperatures, you know, making healthy chilies. I just posted a, a turkey pumpkin chili uh, recipe on our Facebook member page for you to take a look at. You can do soups and stews and they last a long time. And then you can just section them off in those nice uh, plastic, uh, excuse me, glass containers that you have. Um, so those are my tips and tricks for you. Uh, anyone have any additional questions? Did you guys find this helpful? Yeah? All right, so in the chat window, what I want you guys to do is write a key takeaway that you got from this presentation. What is something that you're going to implement this weekend as you're doing your meal prepping? Um, and then you can even rate it, you know, one to 10 in terms of 10 being the most helpful. So we uh, really appreciate all of you guys tuning in today and taking some time out on your Saturday morning. Uh, Robert, I saw that you raised your hand. Do you have a question? Yes, any pre-workout uh, snacks tips? Yes, so with pre-workout, you wanna focus on carbohydrates. So bananas are really good um, if you're coming and working out in the morning. Oatmeal is a really great one. You could have a handful of nuts. Uh, depending on the size of your meal, you want to make sure like if it's something small like a handful of nuts or a banana, you could have it 20 to 30 minutes pre-workout. If you're going to do something heavier like oatmeal, you want to leave yourself a good hour so that your body can digest the food uh, before you come into the workout. And then post-workout, we want to focus on lots of lean protein to help those muscles rebuild. Yeah. Well, awesome. For those of you that uh, are tuning in on the recording that are not part of our fitness family, you can always follow us on our Facebook and Instagram pages or shoot us an email if you want some of the healthy recipes that I've talked about in this presentation. And for you guys members, our next event is the bonfire at Playa Pacifica Park next Friday the 15th at 7.30 p.m. So we hope to see you all there. And then coming up in the new year, in January uh, for 2020, we've got some extra uh, fitness and nutrition challenges that we're going to be implementing for both members and non-members so that we can give you guys extra support and accountability so that you can just maximize your efforts in the gym and then in the other 23 hours of the day. So thank you. If, anyone ha if no one else has any other questions, We'll, uh, we'll go ahead and end this today, and uh, I'll let you guys get on with your weekend. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful weekend. We'll see you guys back at it again on Monday. Yeah. Lisa needs the beginning of the, the video. Uh, she wants to know where she can. Oh, yeah. So, Lisa, you can rewatch this. Uh, I've. Uh, recorded it so it's going to be shared on our main Cali for Fitness Facebook page. And then I'll also, if no one has, you know, if some people don't have Facebook, um, I can just shoot it to you via email as well. Yeah, awesome. Well, thank you so much, everyone. Have a wonderful weekend and we'll see you next week. Bye. Bye. Thank you.